song we were singing, it says, Jehovah the Tepilewen. The man of God once told us that this is a prophetic ministry, which means everything that happens in this place is prophetic. From the beginning of the service till the end. When I was sitting down, I was wondering that God, what if a day like this come where we can worship you freely, where we are not allowed to carry our Bibles, where we can gather in this place and worship you? What's going to happen? What's going to carry us through? The things we depend on might not be able to carry us through. Have you ever asked yourself that question? Isn't it we are an end time generation? Which means that we are living in the end times. Tomorrow we can hear a word that you can no longer worship. You are no longer allowed to carry your Bible. And we cannot gather here anymore. What is going to carry you in this relationship with God? It is your faith. It is your faith. Amen. I was watching. Some people left because there was no electricity. And I was asking God again and again that, God, if we have to stay home, does it mean that I can't worship you? If there's no electricity, does it mean that I can't worship you? Do I have faith on you or do I have faith on other things? Because if you have faith on God, you know that even electricity won't stop you from worshiping him. That's why I'm saying that this is a prophetic ministry. Everything that happens from the beginning of the service till the end is prophetic. May we all take our seats in the presence of the Lord. There's a testimony that I want to share. I've been wanting to share this testimony for the longest time in my life. But I've been asking God, God, how do I explain this without sounding like I'm making it up? Because even myself till today, I don't understand how it came about. But for the purpose of the message of today, I'm going to share this testimony. When God gave us a message that we should do a wedding, I remember we didn't have money. And I asked God to say, God, why now? Why not the other months where we had money, we had funds that we can make sure this happen? But I chose to listen to the word of God. And we decided that we will proceed even though we do not have any money. We went on further looking for a venue. And you know that when you look for a venue, they will tell you that they want a deposit. And indeed, when we got there, they said to us, we need a deposit. You can either pay the deposit 50% and pay the balance later. Or you can pay on a month-to-month -month basis and finish the rest of the money 30 days before the wedding. Both the terms and conditions were not working for us because we did not have money. And we chose that we are going to go with the one of paying on a month-to-month -month basis. When the quotation came, the amount that was required, I remember it was double my salary before any deductions or before the salary spent. And I told myself that I am a vessel. If God says, I want you to do a wedding, I know that it's not mine, it's his. And it's for his glory. And I said, the one that said it will happen, he's the one that's going to find out how the money is going to come about. 
to be honest, children of God, I'm standing here testifying that we had a wedding. We didn't have money. God sent forth destiny help us. And during the time that we had a wedding, it was locked down. We were told that no gatherings were allowed. A lot of people sent me messages, why don't you cancel? Because no gatherings are allowed. Why don't you do a wedding at a restaurant? Why don't you do a wedding at home? We can come decorate you, do a wedding of 10 people. We're on lockdown and we've set a date. And I told myself that I'm not the one who chose the date. I'm not the one who said I'm doing a wedding. God said I must do it. I did not cancel. And by the grace of God, I remember it was 30 days before when the president announced that we can temporarily have gatherings for that weekend. A lot of people asked me and are still asking me today, how did you do it? Which lead us to the title of our message that your faith will carry you through. You cannot do anything with your own strength. You cannot come up with the solutions. It's only your faith that will carry you through. If you read the book of Hebrews 11, it says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. When you are sitting there, ask yourself, do I have faith and is God pleased with me? The Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith, which means there's nothing else you can do that God will be pleased with when you don't have faith. You can read your word, you can climb the mountain, you can fast, but if there's no faith, God is still not pleased with you. The Bible says also in the book of Hebrews, that the righteous shall live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Which means God takes no pleasure in the one that has doubt. God has taken no pleasure in the one that's second-minded, double-minded. Which means you cannot have faith and doubt at the same time. Ask yourself when you are sitting there, do I have faith? And if your answer is no, you already know that God is not pleased with you. He already said it in his way that it is impossible to please me without faith. I'm not pleased when anyone has no faith. The foundation of creation is faith. That's why in the book of Genesis 1-3, God said, let there be light. He said, let there be vault. Let the waters under the sky be gathered together. Let us create humankind in my own image. The let is to express a strong desire for something to happen. That's why I'm saying the foundation of creation is faith. Faith started before. That's why God said, I am not pleased with anyone who does not have faith. Because himself, it took faith for him to speak. What are we? when God applied faith in creation. God applied faith in creation. What are we? You cannot carry on with life without faith because troubles, tribulation will come before you and you cannot stand when you don't have faith. No matter how much you can know the scriptures, you cannot stand without faith. I want us to open the Bible together. To the book of John eleven forty. Jesus was speaking to Martha next to Lazarus' tomb. And he said to her, haven't I told you 
that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Which means you cannot see and not believe. The first thing that you need to do is believe. That's why Jesus said that, did I not tell you? When he was speaking to Martha, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see? Which means the first thing you need to do before you see any results, before you see any manifestation of results, is believing. There's no need for you to believe that there's this fruit basket here when you are seeing it. But faith is believing that it is there without seeing it. There's no need for you to believe that I'm standing here. You are already seeing me. That's why Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Which means you need to believe before you can see. Hallelujah. Whatever that you are crying for, you are praying for in your heart. You need to believe before you can see. Do you know that everything that we are crying for, it's already done in the spiritual realm. It takes our faith for the things in the spiritual realm to manifest in the physical. Which means if you are crying for a car, for a house, for money, whatever it may be, it's already done. It's your faith that's going to bring forth the manifestation of the results. It's your faith that will carry you through. If we open the book of Romans 10, please let us go together. Romans chapter 10. This is a common scripture, but I'm going to read it for the purpose of this message. It says that Romans 10 verse 9 to 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10 says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. The thing that I want us to dwell on, it says that you believe in your heart. You believe in your heart. What does that tell us? It tells us that faith is of a man's heart. You cannot believe with your mind you cannot believe with your eyes. You believe with your heart. I want to tell you today that guard your heart. Because the devil knows that if he deals with your heart, you can no longer have faith. You cannot have doubt in your heart and have faith at the same time. One nullifies the other. Which means you cannot have anger and have faith at the same time. One cancels the other. You cannot have pain of the past, unforgiveness, worry. One nullifies the other. That's why you must guard your heart. The book of 1 Thessalonians 5 says that we must put on faith as a breastplate. Have you ever asked yourself why? Because a breastplate protects the heart. That's why we put on faith as a breastplate. You need to guard your heart. You cannot have faith and have anger at the same time. You cannot have faith and doubt at the same time. You cannot have faith and carry jealousy, pain of the past, unforgiveness at the same time. That's why you must wear faith as a breastplate, protecting your heart. Guard your heart. The devil knows that we focus much on material positions. That's why he keeps on taking away so that you will start to doubt God. Yes, you will know the scriptures that I will never leave you nor forsake you. But once you are in bondage, even that scripture doesn't make sense because you've lost faith. You won't believe when a scripture says I am with you. Even when you pass through the waters, when you pass through the fire, I am with you. You won't believe it because you do not have faith. The devil is there to deal with our hearts. Because the devil knows this holy Bible. He knows all the words that God's spoken. That you cannot please me without faith. 
So he's trying to make sure that God is not pleased with us. You need to understand that our faith will go through testing. That's why the books of James 1 verse 2 says, Consider it pure joy when you face troubles of many kinds because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. God said in the book of Revelation, when he was speaking to the church of Ephesus, that I can't tell you to bring me gold from refined fire, which means that if our faith is not tested, it does not have value in the sight of God. The same with gold. That's why Jesus said in Revelation that I can't tell you to bring me gold refined from fire, because gold that hasn't went through fire, it has no value. Same applies with our faith. If your faith is not tested, it has no value. So do not complain. Do not grumble, child of God. When you go through tribulation, it is a testing of your faith. When you go through rejection, it is a testing of your faith. When you go through delay, it is a testing of your faith. When you go through stagnation, it is a testing of your faith. Whatever it is that you go through, it is a testing of your faith. You should question God when things are moving so well in your life. You should question your Christ. You should check your genuineness. Because there's no way that a genuine Christian won't be tested. And we are tested through trials and tribulations. That's why the Bible says, consider it pure joy. Which means God knows that, yes, it may look like delay to you, but to me it's promotion. It may look like stagnation to you, but for me it's preparation. That's why he says, consider it pure joy. Don't you ask yourself, God, why should I consider it joy when I'm in pain? Because your pain does not look like pain in heaven. Your pain does not look like pain in heaven. God wants to test you so that you come out as refined gold. Have you ever asked yourself that, God, why are we here on earth? Why didn't you just take us to heaven? God wants to build characters. You cannot be a Christian that hasn't been tested so that the outcome can be who God wants you to be. You can never be who God wants you to be by your own strength. You must be tested first. I want us to open the scripture. Isaiah 40, 31. Are you there? Isaiah 40, verse 31. You are wondering, so in this world we are facing a lot of tribulations. We are the end time generation. How do I hold on to my faith? Your answer is in Isaiah 40, 31. God says that, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, number one. So you are asking, how do I hold on to my faith? Your answer is in Isaiah 40. God is saying, wait patiently for me. Which means that everything that God has promised, we need to learn how to wait for the manifestation of the result. God is promising special blessings to everyone that waits. He says, I will renew your strength. What does that mean? It means that God understands that as you are on earth fighting your way through, you will get tired. That's why he says, but if you wait on me, I will renew your strength, which means you, will, you won't get tired. Your strength will be renewed all the time. The error that we are making, we cannot wait 
if you cannot wait, you try to find solutions yourself. You try to do things with your own strength. And do you know what happens? You get tired. And you are most likely to lose your faith. There's a special blessing that comes with waiting. God is saying, I will renew your strength. It doesn't end there. It says you shall mount up high like eagles. Do you know what that means? Let us check the character of an eagle. An eagle can see danger from far. When storms are coming, when strong winds are coming, an eagle can sense it from far. And do you know what an eagle does? It starts flying up high, higher and higher, so that when the strong winds and storm comes, the eagle will be above the storms. So God is saying that those, wait, those who wait upon me, I will renew their strength. They shall mount up high like eagles. Which means whatever storms that come in your life, you shall rise above them. Whatever storms, you shall rise above them like an eagle. You will see them from far and you shall rise upon them. You will soar on high. You will soar on high because it is a special blessing from God. Child of God, I want to encourage you that if you've been waiting all your life, there's an appointed time for the manifestation of results. Don't get tired. God is making you to soar up high like an eagle. Don't get tired. Do not get tired. It's a special blessing. It's a special blessing for those who choose to wait. He says you will run, but you will not get weary. That's what the scripture says. You will run, but you will not get weary. I'm standing here as a child of God. I'm not speaking because I know the scriptures. I'm speaking because I know that life is hard. There's times where you try so much. Trust me, I've tried so much until I learned to wait. That if I wait, there's this peace that God fills you with. He says that I will give you peace that the world does not give. Do you know what that means? It means that you can have so much money but with no peace. If you do not have God. You can be rich, have money, but no peace. What's better, to be rich without peace or to just have peace and allow God to do what he wants to do? When the lady was testifying here, she said, when I look at that house, I look at it as God's house. And I told God that God help me to take care of your house. Do you know why she said that? Because she knows she's a vessel. A vessel is an instrument. Which means that God is in control of everything that has to do with you. He gives you a house. He gives you a car. It all belongs to him. So why are you trying to find a solution to pay rent for someone's house? Why are you trying to find a solution to get money, to pay bills for for someone else, it is not your bill, it is God's bill. If you have that mindset, you allow him to take care of everything. Everything. That is faith. That is faith. Faith is saying, God, I cannot do it with my own strength. Take care of everything. I'm tired. I'm tired. I've tried it all. I want to encourage you, child of God, that we do not know how the future looks like, but we know who holds the future. And that is Christ himself. Tomorrow, they can tell us that we can't gather here anymore. If you check other countries, they are already fighting them for carrying a Bible. We are the end time generation and it's possible that one day we can experience this. Do you know what will carry you through? It is faith. 
Faith is the one that will carry you through. We need to be Christians that even at home, we are the same people that we are at church. We can't allow the devil to make us not to come here, then our faith is affected. Guard your heart. Take care of your heart. Do not worry. Remember, worry and faith cannot be together. One nullifies the other. As you are sitting there, if you know the theme of this year, is a year of divine purpose. Most people have discovered their purpose. But does that mean that the manifestation will be tomorrow? No. But we have faith that God who called us according to his purpose is the one that's going to bring forth manifestation of everything that has to do with me. We need to be able to wait. We need to be able to wait and wait patiently. That is the trick. Waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord. And know that your waiting is not in vain. Because God said, I will renew your strength. He is a faithful God. He knows that you will get tired. But he says, I will renew your strength. So I want to encourage you in closing. Think about it. Yes, you know the scriptures. But if the Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith, then your intellectual ability of this Holy Bible makes no sense. There's no reward when you don't have faith. You can have intellectual ability to know and master the scriptures. But without faith, it is useless. Everything that you want, everything that you need, it's already done in the spiritual realm. Always remember this. It only takes your faith for it to manifest in the physical, number one. Number two, you wait upon the Lord. When you go home, meditate on this message. Check yourself, do I have faith? If I don't have faith, which means God is not pleased with me, I need to do something. Do you know how to have faith? Do you know how to have faith? The only way you can have faith is to have faith. There's no formula. There's no method. Even if you can go to Google and research, there's no method. Yes, they will tell you according to their intellectual ability. But the only way for you to have faith is to have faith. Isn't it having faith is to believing on things that are not seen? When you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you accepted someone you have not seen, which means you have faith already. What's stopping you from having faith right now in the situation that you are in? You have faith already, child of God. Don't worry how long is God taking with the answer. The book of Habakkuk says it awaits an appointed time. Every vision awaits an appointed time. A time will come where everything that God has promised is going to manifest. A time will come. Always remember that in the back of your head, that even if it takes too long, he who promised is faithful. Even if it makes you to cry, cry, but don't lose faith. He says he will renew your strength. When you get weak, continue. When you feel tired, continue. When you feel like giving up, continue. Because he will renew your strength. You will gain strength again. It's a life of Christianity. Which means today you can be up here. You will face tribulations. You hold on. You continue. You continue. Just like that. Being a Christian does not mean that you are in a free zone. When you check your life and you see many problems. There's nothing wrong you are doing. 
It's a life of Christianity. It's a life of sacrifice. You chose it yourself. That's why you are sitting here today. But one thing about this decision, your pain does not look like pain to God. The decision you made of following Christ has rewards. Don't give up at the last second. No matter how painful it is, don't give up at the last second. This message might not make sense now, but remember this. We are an end time generation. Your faith will be shaken like never before. Many will be Christians for 30 years, 40 days and live, give up on the last day. Do not give up. Because he who promised is faithful. If you were here thinking of giving up, <laughs> I want to share a story. There was a lady who was attending a church and she was seeking financial breakthrough. She kept on changing churches, changing churches because the answer she's looking for, she's not finding it. Then there's this church she went to where she met another lady. The lady said to her, you look familiar. Were you not at AA church last week? The lady said, yes. And she said, even me, I've been going around looking for answers. Guess what? I found an answer. Then the lady asked, you find an answer where? Please share with me. Then he said, oh, there's this other Sangoma where, where, where you pay much like this, you do this. We've tried church, it's not working. So let's try this. That is the danger of trying to find answers from men instead of finding answers from God. That is the danger of failing to wait. You end up trying your own ways. Guess what? At the last second, you will fall. That's what the devil wants. And most of the time, when you are about to fall, your answer was already knocking. But you cannot see it. Paul said in the book of Corinthians, that for we walk by faith and not by sight. Which means we believe without seeing. We walk by believing and not seeing. That's what Paul meant. If you walk by sight, you try and find solutions and they will lead you to danger. That's what happened to the lady. Imagine you've been a faithful Christian for all these years. When your miracle is about to happen, you lose it. Most of the time, when God is about to do something so great in your life, you will go through fire that will burn you like never before. But if you walk by sight, you won't be seeing what God is about to do in your life. That's why you want to give up at the last second. I want to encourage you, child of God, that the harder it gets, the closer you are to your blessing. The harder it gets, the closer you are to your blessing. The harder it gets, the closer you are to your blessing. You need to wait for the manifestation of everything that God has promised. The trick is in waiting. There's nothing you can do with your strength. You must stop believing on material things. We have faith on material things. That's why you say, for me to get that job, I need this qualification. For me to buy that house, I need this money. Why you then say, for me to get that job, I need God. God can do it for you with no qualifications. You need to stop conforming to the standards of this world. Yes, the world will tell you, for you to get a car, you go to the dealer, you apply, you need a pay slip. No, that's not how God works. It's your faith. It's your faith that will encourage you that I'm going to the dealer. I don't have pay sleep. I don't qualify 
Yes, the requirements of this job say I need five years experience. I need a degree in this and that. I don't have it, but I'm going. That is faith. Do you know that most people will go to heaven because of faith? If you don't have faith that heaven exists, God is not pleased with you. Imagine you have so much faith that one day I will enter heaven. Do you think that a God who is merciful won't help you while you are still alive? Because you have faith that there is life beyond this earth. God will be helping you through bit by bit to make sure that you see the results of your faith. He will help you through. All he's asking for is wait upon me. Wait upon me. Wait. Wait upon me. I want us to stand up and pray. And ask God to forgive us for doubting him for being double minded he says that if you believe and you ask without doubting it shall be done for you he says that it is impossible to please me without faith so I want you to pray don't look at your neighbor you know that you've been struggling with faith you've been struggling with faith so we are going to pray that God restore our faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Lord, you are a merciful God. We are standing before your presence, lifting up our hands as a sign of surrender. Lord, we say restore our faith today. Restore our faith today. You said it in your way that it is impossible to please you without faith. Lord, may you revive our faith. We want to ask without doubting. We want to ask without complaining. We want to ask and know that you will do it for us without having a double mind. Heavenly Father, revive our faith. Come on, pray. You know that you've been struggling with faith. God is a God who answers prayer. Tell him today to restore your faith. To restore your faith. Lord, restore our faith. Revive us. Revive us, Holy Spirit. Fill us again with your fresh fire. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. There's a trick I want you to learn. I was also being taught. There's so much power in praying the scriptures. You just open your Bible, you read a particular scripture, and you pray what the scripture is saying. So now we are going to open Isaiah 40. If you have a Bible, carry it while standing. Isaiah 40 verse 31. to pray are you ready to pray I'm reading from NIV but you can read from any version of your choice mine says that but those who hope but I like but those who wait in the Lord shall renew their strength they shall soar on high like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint so we are going to pray and say, God, as you said it in the book of Isaiah 31, that those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. Lord, renew my strength today. If you want to pray, holding your Bible and reading it, you must tell God that, Lord, you said in Isaiah 40, 31, 
that those who wait upon you shall renew their strength. They shall mount up high like eagles. They will run but not get weary. Lord, help me today. Renew my strength. I want to run and not get weary. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you said it in your weight that those who wait upon you, they shall renew their strength. Lord, I stand before you. Renew my strength, Lord. The way you said it in your word. May my strength be renewed. May my strength be renewed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I want to mount up high like eagles. I want to run and not be weary. I want to walk and not be faint. Renew my strength, Jehovah. Renew my strength. I've tried doing things with my own power and might. I've tried it my own ways and it did not work. Renew my strength. I want to mind up high like eagle. I want to run and not be weary. I want to walk and not be faint. Lord, you said that you will renew my strength if I wait. And you teach me to wait, oh God. Help me out. Help me out, Lord. Help me, Jehovah. Continue praying in the name of Jesus. Lord, renew my strength. Renew my strength. Continue praying. I shall run this year and not get weary. I shall not faint. I cannot hear your prayer. and win today. Hello viewers all over the world. I greet you by the special grace of God right here at the ROC TV studios. Be fruitful. I am here today to remind you of the words of Prophet Fazai that he always says, less on us, more on others. He always teaches from the word and actions that we must be a channel of love where there is hatred, a channel of light where there is darkness. The world is in darkness today. The world is troubled today. And where there is love, there is always a solution to brethren in need. What is the state of your heart concerning the situation at hand? Which step have you taken to be that channel in a troubled world? Let your acts of love be a sermon to an unsaved world. Be a partner today.